Hello everyone and welcome back to Asian Noob. This video is part 2 of my 4 part ultimate guide series for Return of Rome, in which I covered the fundamentals and economy in part 1, buildings and technologies in this video, military and combat in part 3, and water and navy in part 4. In anticipation of the Return of Rome DLC coming out next week, I figured that there would be tons of AOE 2 players who either need a refresher on how AOE 1 played out, or need to learn the game from the ground up to get up to speed with the rest. I've linked all four parts of the series in the pinned comment below, and I've ensured that I'm as concise as possible, as tons of info is crammed into each part of this series. Alright, without further ado, let's dive into the buildings and technologies of Return of Rome. As usual, let's begin with the Stone Age. Keep in mind that I'll cover the buildings and what they do first, then I'll cover the technologies to research later on. First, let's start with the Humble House. Unlike AOE 2, houses in AOE 1 cost 30 wood instead of 25, and, more importantly, only provide 4 population space instead of 5. This usually throws off AOE 2 players when they first start the game, so make sure you keep an eye out on your pop space. Granaries may seem like the mill equivalent of AOE 2, but you're in for a surprise because this building will make little sense to you. It has two main functions. In the Stone Age, it serves as a drop-off point for berry bushes, and in the Tool Age for farms. And nothing else. It's not even the prerequisite building for farms either. So this brings us to its second function, and it's the building you research walls and towers? Yes, you heard that right. You'll have to come back to your granary where you stored your berries and wheat to upgrade your defenses well into the Iron Age. As mentioned, I'll cover those upgrades later on. This brings us to the Storage Pit, which serves a significantly larger purpose. Unlike AOE 2, where lumber camps and mining camps are separated, the storage pit here serves the purpose of both, which is definitely great when you find two of these resources side by side. That said, apart from wood, gold, and stone, you can also drop off any food from animals, so hunted meat and fish go here instead of the granary. And finally, the storage pit also serves the purpose of the blacksmith in AOE 2, so you'll have to come back here to upgrade your military unit's attack and armor. Once again, I'll cover those upgrades in a moment. The dock works the same as AOE 2, as you start with fishing boats, then you can train transports and other military ships as you age up. Be sure to watch part 4 for a closer look at docks and water gameplay overall. And finally, the barracks is the same as usual, as you train mostly infantry units here, but more on that later. In the Tool Age, you get access to 5 new buildings, which are the Archer Range, the Stable, the Market, and the fortifications of walls, gates, and towers once you research them at the Granary. The Archer Range allows you to train range units of course, and the Stable mounted units. The market serves a lot of purposes here. As mentioned before, you can now buy and sell resources and train trade cards to begin your trade. It also houses technologies that affect not only your economy but also your military as well, but more on that later. Also, as mentioned in part 1, do keep in mind that the market is the prerequisite for farming, so you'll need to build it first before the farm is unlocked. Walls and gates more or less work the same way. Even though gates were introduced as a new building in Return of Rome, they function the same way as they do in AOE 2. And you also don't need to research any new technology here, as it comes together with the wall. That said, ensure that you wall red to red so you don't have any holes in your wall. As I covered in part 1, towers can now also garrison 5 villagers inside, but their offensive capabilities are very limited in the early to mid game. Moving on to the Bronze Age, you get access to four new buildings. The first is a siege workshop that allows you to build siege units. The second is the academy, which allows you to train heavy infantry units akin to the Teutonic Knight. The third is the temple, which is akin to the monastery in AOE 2, where priests and their upgrades reside. And the fourth is the government center, which is akin to the university in AOE 2. Also, the Bronze Age is where you get to build additional TCs, and more on that later. And finally, the Iron Age introduces no new buildings but the Wonder, which serves the same purpose as it does in AOE 2. Okay, now that we've covered each building, let's go through each of their prerequisites now. As you do in AOE 2, you will need to build a barracks to construct an archer range and a stable, but the similarities end here. The archer range then unlocks the siege workshop, and the stable unlocks the academy. The latter portion of this progression makes no sense to me whatsoever, but hey, it's the way the game was set up. The granary allows you to build a market, which in turn allows you to build farms, government centers, and temples. And finally, the government center allows you to build additional TCs in the Bronze Age, so don't be confused as to why the option doesn't exist as soon as you age up, as you'll need a GC first. Of course, if you somehow lose your only standing TC before this, then you can always build a new one without this condition, just like in AOE 2. You may have noticed the lack of a stronghold type of building like castles or creposts in AOE 2, and that's because no such building exists in AOE 1. This is why I alluded to why it's more difficult to defend your economy passively in part 1 of this series. 
You can technically upgrade your towers to become Ballista Towers in the Iron Age, but first, they're very expensive to research, second, they're only available at the very late game, and third, they're more akin to something like Keep Towers with arrow slits rather than castles or creposts. So holding a defensive position will either involve heavy military investment or spamming towers, or likely a combination of both. Great, we've covered all buildings and their prerequisites, so let's now move on to the technologies. Town centers and houses have no technologies to research, so we'll start with a granary. As mentioned before, the granary allows you to unlock walls and towers with a research for each, and their first upgrades that unlocks them are ridiculously cheap at only 50 food each. With each age, you'll get to upgrade them further, and all their costs are reasonable. The only exception that I've mentioned before is the final Ballista Tower upgrade, which is very expensive and has ballistics as a prerequisite, so keep that in mind. The storage pit acts like the blacksmith in AoE 2 as mentioned before, and although the five different texts and icons may look similar, the upgrades in Return of Rome work quite differently. I'll try to make this as simple as possible. You'll first start off with four different technology lines in the Tool Age. The armor icons that you're used to from AoE 2 only upgrade the melee armor of the unit class, so even though the game refers to these as infantry armor, archer armor, and cavalry armor, what it's referring to really is the melee armor for each unit type. These technology lines are also very simple, as they all give plus 2 melee armor each subsequent upgrade for a progressively higher cost. The tool working line is very similar to the forging line in AoE 2, as you get plus 2 melee damage for tool working, plus 2 for metal working, and plus 3 for metallurgy. And finally, from the Bronze Age onwards, you'll be able to research Bronze Shield, Iron Shield, and Tower Shield. The game refers to this as Infantry Armor versus Missile Weapons, which is basically Pierce Armor for infantry units. So you may ask, how on earth am I going to be able to upgrade the Pierce Armor of my ranged and mounted units? The answer is, you can't. Upgrading the Pierce Armor for those units does not exist, and they're stuck with whatever base Pierce Armor they have. For example, a fully upgraded Cataphract will always stay at his base 3 Pierce Armor, and all Archer units will stay at their 0 Pierce Armor and will deal full damage to one another. You may have noticed one more thing. Where's the Fletching Equivalent upgrade that increases the damage and range of my Archer units? Well, I'm glad you asked, because this takes us to the market. The market houses 5 main lines of upgrades, and they are not that straightforward. Let's start with the wood upgrades. Woodworking, Craftsmanship, and Artisanship all increase wood collection rate by 20%, plus 2 wood carry capacity, and yes, plus 1 range for all your range units, including the scout ship line. So yeah, you need to get your wood upgrades to ensure that your archers aren't outranged in Return of Rome. Stone mining increases the rate by 25% and plus 3 carry capacity, and provides plus 1 attack and range to your slingers. And again, I'll cover those units in part 3. The stone upgrade Siegecraft further provides the same villager and slinger bonuses, but also allows villagers to have bonus damage against towers and walls. The latter portion is basically irrelevant to the Iron Age though. Gold mining gives the same bonus as its stone mining cousin, but with no military implications. That said, its next upgrade in the Iron Age provides free tributes to allies alongside the same gather bonuses. Unlike the rest, domestication, plow, and irrigation are very straightforward, as they provide a flat 75, 100, and 125 food bonus to your farms. And finally, the wheel speeds up your villagers by a whopping 50%, which is a massive bonus in itself, but also allows you to train both trade carts in the market and chariot units in the stable and archery range. There are no further upgrades you can get for your trade carts, as setting up your trade from here on out works pretty much the same as it does in AoE 2. As alluded to before, you can buy and sell resources in the market as well, but the ratios are different and more punishing as mentioned in part 1, so keep that in mind. And finally, let's move on to the government center. The GC is very similar to the university in AoE 2, so let's go through its technologies. In the Bronze Age, nobility provides 15% more HP to both horse and camel units, riding is the now defunct equivalent of cartography in AoE 2, in which it provides shared vision with allies, architecture reduces build time by a third and increases building HP by 20%, logistics reduces the pop space barracks units occupied by half, and city watch increases buildings line of sight by 3 tiles. In the Iron Age, aristocracy increases the movement speed of academy units by 25%, and more on those units in part 3, ballistics is the same as AoE 2, in which range units will aim for where the unit is moving towards for better accuracy and is the prerequisite for the Ballista Tower upgrade. Alchemy is basically the chemistry of AoE 2, which provides the only plus 1 damage range units can get in this game alongside the plus 6 damage for fire galleys. Engineering provides plus 2 range for siege units and siege ships. Conscription leads to 25% faster land military creation, and urbanization makes houses provide double the population space at 8 apiece. 
Do keep in mind that CityWatch, conscription, and urbanization are all brand new technologies that didn't exist in AV1 before. So this is yet another example of newly introduced balance changes by the developers. Thank you for spending some of your time with us, as that wraps up my summary of all buildings and technologies to research in Return of Rome. I will cover all temple technologies in part 3 and all dock technologies in part 4, so be sure to watch all parts of my Ultimate Guide series to get up to speed with all aspects of the game. I hope you found this guide helpful, and I would appreciate it if you could share it with others who you think might find it helpful as well. As always, thanks for watching everyone, be sure to subscribe for more AoE content, and see you all in the next one.